Every October since 2011, Retro Movie Geek has brought you the spooky side of retro movies. And this year is no different. So, a haunting we will go as we dig up classic tales of ghosts and hauntings that are 20 years old or older. But remember, we spoil the hell out of every movie we cover. So consider yourself forewarned. Spooky Flix Fest starts now. All right, so we are here for a bonus episode, right, Peter? We are doing a bonus yes, we TV are ghostly episode. Uh, if you're watching this on a mom and pop video shop, you can already see. Oh, no, I got to go this direction. Already see our wonderful. Uh, son of a. There, there, there. Uh, you're frozen, Peter. Uh, guest. <laughs> now, now yeah, yeah, you're pointing, you're pointing. Uh, guest. Uh, but for those who are listening, yeah, just freeze. Yeah, Dar- Daryl did that quite a bit last time. Just so you know. <laughs> um, still, is the still one, gimmick. Yeah, the, the one and only Nathan Toll returning to Retro Movie Geek. Thank you so much for having me back. It's great to see you guys again. You know what occurred to me, and I know you've probably gotten this before, and I don't, and I've met you in person a couple times, so you think this would have hit me earlier, but you you bear a passing resemblance and i hope you take this as a compliment to paul rudd i've gotten that many yeah, of course times. yeah 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 you totally <laughs> in, uh, in high yeah. school it was james vanderbeek so oh, much okay. so that my, nick- I, my nickname was dawson for a while yeah, that i could see too uh, yeah but yeah i get paul rudd a lot yeah and, yeah yeah like if, a, if paul rudd and and vanderbeek had a baby it would be nathan toll <laughs> yeah pretty pr- pr- in a couple of years it'll probably be like gilbert godfrey or something oh well you know <laughs> There's worse things to be compared to, uh, yeah, but for you the just you just put images in my mind. Maybe I didn't really want to, <laughs> or maybe you did, weirdo. All right, so we are doing for this bonus episode a uh, we're covering Ghost Story, aka Circle of Fear from 1972. This is not the Ghost Story movie based nope. on the uh, Peter Straw book. This is a an, a anthology, a short lived, I guess, relatively short lived anthology series that. Prior to us doing this, I'd never even heard of. Had you ever heard of this, Nathan? I have. I know. I had never heard of it before, and yeah. so I. Well, we'll get. To I was the only one, apparently. Peter was, and and Allison, because as it turns out, on oh, Haunted yeah, Death, I I heard about it through her. Yeah. Did no, you did up- you did you hear about Ghost Story or Circle of Fear or both? Uh, both actually. Okay. Yeah, because I think on Haunted Davenport, right? They'd covered. Yeah, they talked it. about it. Yeah. yeah. So specifically, though, we are doing the episode. The dead we leave behind, yeah, which which stu- which what, which was the the first episode of season one after the pilot. Oh, yes. okay. And well, actually, I can give you the date it aired. Well, why don't you give us a synopsis and the date it aired? Well, I was going to anyway, sir. Okay, September fifteenth, nineteen seventy-two is when the dead we leave behind premiered. Mm-hmm. Let's see, and I found a short, well, short or short, I don't know. Uh, summary here when ranger elliot when ranger elliot brent's pretty young wife joanne uh, joanna complains of boredom he buys her a television set unfortunately she starts spending all of her time watching television to the neglect of her household chores one day during an argument elliot accidentally kills joanna he buries her body in a shed behind his cabin after that he starts seeing images of joanna being unfaithful on the television uh one stormy night it's always a stormy night. Uh, a man shows up at the cabin seeking shelter, and Elliot recognizes him as the man Joanna has, uh, was having an affair with. Elliot kills him too, but will the dead stay quietly buried? Hmm. It's not quite accurate, but we'll go with it. Uh, uh, did you, you didn't say the date. Did you say the date? What date? That it aired. Did right? it aired. Yes. Yeah, I said uh, September fifteenth. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, I was I was looking something up, so I was only half paying attention. <laughs> oh, but you were looking at me. Um, so it was directed by Paul Stanley. Not uh, from. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I I know. I, you're sad. I didn't even make that a, a connection at first, but I'm like, why do I know that name? I was like, did he direct something else? I'm about thinking of going through his filmography. I'm like, well, and then literally before I flipped it back over, that's why I wasn't really listening to you. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That's yeah. The guy from kids. Yeah. yeah I, those are interesting. 
uh, opening credits because before Paul Stanley, the producer was a guy named Joel. Yeah. 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 Good. And, uh, good people. Those Joels. Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, no, the Paul Stanley can, I, I mean, I made that guy with kids because I've been a kid's friend since I was eight or nine or something around there. Yeah. So, but if yeah. you, if you look up that, that Paul Stanley on IMDb, he, he, there was not a single TV show in the sixties or the seventies that he did not direct an episode. Yeah, it of. seems yeah. that way. It seems that way. Yeah. Uh, it says, me. It says this one was written by Robert Specht, I guess, and Richard Matheson, which I didn't catch that in the credits. Was that in the credits? No, he developed it for t- TV, apparently, ah, but uh, Specht okay. wrote it, I think. So, gotcha. Um, and so it start- So I'm guessing the host of the series is a guy named Sebastian Cabot, who plays Winston Essex. That's the actor, Sebastian. AKA Al from Home Improvement. Say what? Al from Home Improvement. Did you not uh, think he looked similar to Al? Oh, I thought I think you said that was actually the actor. I'm like, what? How old is that guy? No, yeah, you're right. You're right. He does have he has a. It's a weird. I also got Orson Welles vibe. Definitely, yeah, I yeah, got off him is yeah. So, um, so he's the host. I will say By straight the way, out. Yes, we need to go back to Paul Stanley. What okay. episode of uh, uh, Turn on the Tube did he direct? I have no. We've idea. already covered. I have no. One idea. of your favorites. Oh no. With an airplane. Oh, the, the World War II one? Yeah, Soul Survivor. Maybe that's why I recognize his name. Because besides the kiss thing, he yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. it did seem familiar to me from a movie perspective. Yep. Um, so Sebastian Cabot as Winston Essex. I honestly, I, I will say this. I am a huge fan of horror anthologies, I think, as we all are. I did not. It's not even it was him. I think it was the location. I found it to be oddly, it was too somewhere in time, like sunny. You know what it cheerful. reminded me of? What? When, when, they, when they showed us a, like a big photo of, or picture of the, the hotel or the mansion or whatever it was called where he was staying. Another uh, Turn of the Tube episode, the one um, where they were kind of in a limbo. They went to yes. a hotel and they, yes. it kind of, kind of reminded me of that. Yes. Yeah, it did have that vibe. But I think, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't, so many of, and it's not that I mind the horror in the daylight idea, but I think of Tales from the Dark Side, the way they, their opening credits and the music and everything and, and the way it looks and you're not as brightly lit. It just, it's, it creates a wonderful tone. This was weirdly like Fantasy Island, you know, I, I was, you know what I mean? Like, it just, it didn't yeah. feel setting the mood enough w- leading into the episode we ultimately get I-, I don't know if how you guys ultimately felt i mean you said nathan you agree but i mean what did you think generally about the opening and the ending i liked the like the opening credit sequence i like mm-hmm. how they had like the, the blue streaks kind of swirl from like yeah. the letters and the letters would form into the to the to the names and then fly away like ghosts yeah. and um you know it's cool to see executive producer william castle in there yeah that was but cool I, yeah, yeah. I, I agree uh he is no crypt keeper, and this this uh, this building yeah. is no crypt. Yeah, and I think that was the and you know I thought and maybe they eventually do this. This is the, literally the only episode I've seen from the series. I was wondering if the reveal was going to be this was essentially a asylum or something. You know what I mean? Where people were. I thought that could be where we're going with this, but then they never alluded to it after no. the episode. I think, it, I, th- I think it is actually. Is it supposed to be? That's, that's what I got. I thought from some facility. Yeah, some hospital or something, because it had that vibe as well, but not in a as creepy a sense as you think. And I'm not saying it had to be, you know, dark and cobwebs and overly gothic, but I think there's a way you can have things be sunny and bright, but off-putting. I know that when the show uh, became Circle of Fear, they jettisoned him and that whole intro. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they replaced him with somebody else. Or no, they I don't just think, I think, altogether. Uh, from what I understood about what Allison said too, that when it turned to a circle of fear, they kind of ditched the whole uh, hmm. opening and with a with a kind of keeper uh, mm-hmm. or a narr- narrator. So yeah. uh, I also thought it was kind of kind of silly the way they would they they showed clips of the whole episode before. It's like yeah, that was a little I mean, weird. Yeah, but that Teaser was kind trailer. of a, a norm back then. I th- I mean I've seen many shows, a lot of. Um, uh, sitcoms or uh, they, they kind of look uh, uh, tonight on police story. I've seen it on police. Yeah. Story. I think I know what you're talking so, about uh, where they would just sometimes show. They did. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, I agree with Nathan off-putting. though. I, I yeah. found it. I found it off putting. I felt like, okay, well now not that they gave away everything in that opener, but 
it just it it removed any sense of like things that would have made me more curious. I think as the episode progressed, yeah, mm-hmm. I think I think they did they did it uh, just to kind of uh, I don't know to draw you in and think oh okay what's going on here or what's going on here. But today it feels kind of like oh, I was almost trying uh, going to, to I looked at the timestamp. Hey, wait, did I just jump into it or what? Yeah, that's what I thought too. Yep. Yeah. And and just for the purposes of our discussion here, so I don't have to keep switching back and forth, I am going to bring up the Imdaba. Here we go. Now that we can. The, there that we was, go. That was Stella Stevens. Mm, the lovely Stella Stevens. Oh, yes. Um, and and her, her and Jason Robards actually yeah. starred in uh, the, the Western, the Ballad of Cable Hogue. Oh. Together. Yeah. Look, look at you. She was, uh, uh, how, how do I put this? Uh, well, she was in the buff. Oh. Not, the whole, not the whole movie though, but but uh, from at least uh, so. Uh, so this wasn't a TV movie. Uh, no, no, it's a really <laughs> good uh, western. Yeah, I don't you don't watch this, uh, too many watches or uh, westerns, but uh, it's a good one. Okay, I, I trust they, your they, dis- your uh, uh, call on that. They've played off each other before. Well, I loved. First of all, I'll say this: Stella Stevens. I recognize her. I just can't say from what necessarily. Oh, she was also in uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Bell Kagan, um, uh, Poseidon Adventures. She was okay. in that too. Uh, the Nutty Professor, I think, is where I first saw her. Oh, okay, the yeah. old one with um, with Jerry, uh, yeah. And, uh, Jerry yeah, Lewis. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but of course, Jason Robards, I freaking love that guy. Like everything mm-hmm. I've ever seen him, whether he's a good guy or he's yeah. a, 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 you know, a douche nozzle like he is in this one. <laughs> I, I, I love him. Like yeah, whether he's, he's a good douche nozzle. Yeah, like with the dad in like, Parenthood, or you remember the day after the the, yeah. the the nuclear war? Did you ever see that, Nathan? It's like it was a mini series from the early eighties. No, there are so many Jason Robards. Very, films very I have not uplifting, seen. and then oh. Uh, oh god, no, it's not. You happy, happy there are two story. movies. <laughs> if if you weren't already and this one, <laughs> if you weren't already convinced that nuclear war might be a bad idea, just do a double feature of the day after and Testament. Testament. Your yeah. life will you will literally I don't know if you want to get out of bed. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, can, no, can, no. Can, can we add threads to that mix? And to, oh yeah. I've oh, never brought, yes. I, I've not I've never seen threads and I, I don't know that I want to. <laughs> that, I, that is a that is I a think, movie night that should never happen. Yeah. yeah. I think you should experience it at least once, Joel. At least once. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's that's, very, that's, very the, that, that's the tagline. You should experience it at least <laughs> once. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Jason Roberts, I mean, Philadelphia. Uh, Once Upon uh, a Time in the West. Yeah, Parenthood. Best movies Remember? ever made. Yeah, uh, it was. End yeah. of story. There we go. That's yeah, the best uh, movie ever done. The, uh, the first time I ever saw him was in Something Something Wicked This Way Comes. Oh, that's right. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And I, I had no idea who he was, but I, I adored him in that movie. And then He's so great. So and then the second movie I saw him in was not as uh, it, it was a pretty terrible movie. It was uh, Dream a Little Dream. With hey yeah. okay so I, <laughs> it, it's actually it's a back, bad movie but i have a very soft spot for that movie in my heart uh, plus know, pl- plus meredith salinger so yes okay. <laughs> yeah have you yeah. have you looked at jason jason robard's like, wikipedia page no like, he has an incredible history of oh uh, you mean movie wise or just no age, no, even, no his, before he became wise. an actor like look, oh. yeah, look him up he, he he had quite a life Oh really? Okay. Mm-hmm. And any any interesting trivia bits you remember from uh, checking him out? Uh, he was a hero. Oh, okay. Like war hero. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, World War Two, yeah. I assume. He saw some things. Was he World War Two or Korea? Oh, oh he, he did it all. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. <laughs> a lot of the act of the, the actors back then went on to. I mean, just look at Christopher Lee. So uh, no, for, yeah, uh, for one. And I don't know. Th- there's no way this is possible, right? Apparently, he broke a record. He ran a mile in four minutes and eighteen seconds. Is that humanly possible to run that fast? Won't your heart explode? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Was that the? Was that always the concern? If they ever, I think there's probably is there somebody's re- re- uh, run it faster, right? Four eighteen. God damn. Uh, oh, hold on. So it was. What did you say? He ran a uh, record. He said four. it said that he he uh, excelled in athletics, running a four minute eighteen mile during his junior year at Hollywood High School in Los Angeles. Hmm. Okay, well, according to Wikipedia, which again always could you know take it with a grain of salt, the fastest is the current men's record holder. This is insane. Three minutes forty three seconds. Okay, I'm assuming he had wheels on his shoes. That's bullshit. Uh, did not apparently I have wheels it. on his <laughs> shoes. I cannot pronounce his name. I apologize. 
uh, the individual who did this, but I cannot pronounce it and I don't even want to try to butcher it. So, uh, but yeah, that's insane. Yeah. That hmm. is craziness how fast that is. Uh, but yeah, so I'd be a four minute 18. It's still fast. I mean, that's, that's insane how fast that is. Um, uh, t- 22 minutes, maybe 23. <laughs> it sounds about more my speed. Two, three days. Uh, so I, I want to address some things in this episode. Uh, since this is a bonus episode, we're going to keep it fairly short and sweet. Um, I really like the setting. I liked how isolated he was. I like that he's like a forest. I guess he's got a forest ranger or maybe like That's, a federal, yeah. like a, like a, for, like a, like a, like a uh, what they call it, um, uh, it's a wildlife police officer, right? Yeah, it's yeah. not just, you know, and, and I do like that. I like the whole idea of, you know, they, they have to get him on the CB radio and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, Which is why he kind of loses his mind when she switches it up. Oh, okay. Well, well, we're going to get, Oh, I have that. That's in my notes, Peter. Don't jump ahead on me here. Yeah, um, whoops. <laughs> so the, the TV set, you, you mentioned this in the synopsis, it shows the past and the future, right? It reveals things. Yeah. It's funny because, so the, the feature movie that I made that I still need to send you the link for Peter, uh, back in the late nineties, that is an idea that I totally had because I, I was trying to add something to the movie to have it and when I say make more sense, I may basically mean just made it even weirder. But that yeah. idea of a TV set that for no apparent reason just has some supernatural quality that can show it. In other words, it's a way to get across exposition yeah. visually as a bit of a cheat, but do it in a kind of a creepy way. So I appreciated that from this movie because it was an idea that I had for something totally unrelated. Uh, 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 Joanne, his wife. Yes. So a, obviously they do this whole thing i feel like this has actually been greatly inverted now so it's nowadays when you see a show like the husband or boyfriend is the one who's sitting around watching tv and the wife or the girlfriend i because we're rewatching parks and rec and um uh, ann and andy the the chris pratt and uh why am i brain farting on her name you want to play karen in the office come on joel uh rashida jones is that it? Rashida Jones, right? The one who played <laughs> Anne in Perks and Rec. She, she's like a nurse, and he's like the guy sitting on the couch watching TV all day. So it's like the, the, those roles, I think, back then it was a lot more oftentimes presented. The guy comes over from work, his wife's sitting there, and he's, he's, you know, a bit of a, let's just say he's a dick to her because, you know, he's <laughs> the way he treats her. But she's, you know, obviously has some resentment issues towards him as well. I will say his reaction to her unplugging the radio, the CB, and just remove... Well, basically, all those old types of mechanical analog types of devices, the, the knobs pop right off and on. I mean, you guys remember that, right? I mean, they, they just slide right off and on. Mm-hmm. And he basically throws her, which leads yeah. to her death, which then made my other note, which was... My, which is what the, the note I wrote. Oops. <laughs> well, Joanne, unlike Steven Seagal, is easy to kill because yeah. like, he just like basically threw her and next thing you know, she's dead. Uh, but I felt like I, I, I might be going out on a limb to say this. That could have been a bit of an overreaction <laughs> on, on Jason Robards' part. That's Mitch. He's not a morning person. And okay. Have to his, co- man- his coffee was not- cold. His coffee, coffee was cold. <laughs> yeah. And also, you know, she was, oh, about to she, she, was- she was about to leave him. So his emotions. Fair were kind of well, she'd obviously, and I will say his uniform. Well, and I will say what I love is even in this show for its imperfections, everything aside, even though the dialogue the subtext, like they never say you're cheating on me. They never, there's never that on the nose. It's very, you know, subtextual. They're talking about the TV. They're talking oh, well, about he's kissing the other guy. Well, fairly passionately on TV. That kind of gives it. Yeah, away. but that's mm-hmm. later. That's after yeah, she's know. dead. Yeah. I'm talking about the, the argument they have yeah, 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 about yeah. bored she is. Yeah. Did you guys Holy. think for a second that this was going to turn into a killer doll episode? A killer doll? Yeah. Why, why did you think that? <laughs> because she said, you know why I'm leaving? Because you're a doll. He, she said that? She said, yeah, she said, you're a doll. But, you know, she, she said, you're a doll. Doll. Uh, oh, oh, doll. Do you, uh, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I was like, I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I, I will say, um, and we'll get to it, but I, I did I did like the fact that the dialogue wasn't on the nose, that they used subtext, and I, and I enjoyed that moment between the two actors. I thought that was very strong. Um, I will say it's interesting that this apparently has a this this area of the wilderness he lives in has like roaming wild packs of German shepherds. 
I'm yeah. guessing. I'm yeah, guessing they were supposed to be wolves. To, yeah, but they were like, use huskies then, because at least they kind of <laughs> look wolf like. Those were so obviously German shepherds. Uh, I did like the music. I, when it does kick in, I liked how discordant. It's, it's, it's a creepy atmospheric, this episode. Yes. With the music and the wind and, and the howling of the Lots wolves. Lots of wind and howling. Yeah. I, I thought that would yes. added a lot to it. I will say too, it it does play. It's a, like fifty minutes long without yeah. the with, they they don't have the commercials in it. So I did think it actually fairly moved. It moved by at a fairly brisk pace. Like yes, every time, yeah. yeah, it wasn't like uh because I one time I did check to see how much I had left because I had something else going on and I didn't want to get interrupted. And I and I was like, oh wow, I'm already like over halfway through this thing, and it felt yeah. like I was still in the, maybe the first yeah, 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 the bit first of it, fifteen minutes. Or yeah, something. so yeah. it fl- it flew by. I got to give him credit now. Yeah. All that being said, and I'm curious what your guys' reactions to these things will be. Little things. Am I the only one who thought, first off, this very much reminded me of the Something to Tide You Over episode from Creep Show. Mm-hmm. Very much reminded me. It was just cool. I, mean, I, I love that episode, of, of, of that segment of Creep Show. So I did like that aspect of this. However, I thought that it was going to be one of those things where Jason Robart's character, Elliot Brent was going to try to frame once he realized who this guy was, he was going to try to frame him for the murder because why would you kill him when he does? Like you had the guy sleep on your couch all night long. If you're going to kill him, then kill him. But why bury it first of that? And then why bury him in your own shed when you have access to a wilderness that he presumably knows better than anybody else? Yeah. His mode was going to do that. No, like Nathan, go what Nathan? Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, his motives were a little unclear to me. I actually watched this episode twice because I okay. wasn't really sure what his plan was overall. But in when he first saw the like the like the future on the TV, he yeah. drove the car off the cliff, or he he made yeah. it happen somehow. And so yeah. I thought the plan. I think the plan was to have. He was going to put them both in the car, in the car, and, and, so and then too, push yeah. it off the cliff. But but then his car wouldn't start the next day. And so because, he, was, because he, he mentions for to um, the other guy, the guy with the arm in the sling, that um, the motorist. Yeah. yeah, that's what he, he was going to take. He was going to take, take her to town. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, so I think I, that, that was the plan to have them go over the cliff and then. Okay. Yeah. But then, like but it's like it'd be quite a coincidence. Like the same guy in just a span of less than twenty-four hours, he drove off the cliff twice. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah, and her body, she's already been, I mean, not that, I don't know how good the forensic science is in 1972, but she's obviously been dead longer than him. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, you know what I mean? And buried uh, maybe, in the ground. Maybe the soil is dry, so it keeps Really dry. Like, but, she's yeah. like mummified, yeah. <laughs> there you I, go. I, I mean, she hasn't been dead that long, but I mean, she probably is going to, st- it would be, I feel like, unless the car blew up. Like, if he could get the car to blow up, then maybe that could hide it better. I don't know. Yeah. I just thought it was like a weird thing. And then, even more so than his motivation, I really could not figure out, unless I missed something, mm-hmm. how did the 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 lover guy the what was motorist. it it was um which jack is that kelly. jack kelly the mo- just motorist yeah they don't yeah. even give him a name how yeah. did he know to like he's desperately checking the shed and the only thing i they do to set that up is you see elliot pull the jeep up it gets out right we see him put the lock on they cut back to the motor sitting on the couch listening and you could tell the jeep is parked and idling but mm. he a doesn't know where elliot stopped B, he doesn't know he was messing with the shed. C, he has why he has no reason to go check the shed. Why? It's not like he was looking around for her and assumes that she's in the shed. You know what I mean? Like I thought it was a weird. I think I, if what I remember, I, I know he was looking through the window of the shed. He might have seen her luggage there. But what made him go to the shed to begin with? He's looking. You know what for, I mean? He, he's looking for his wife. He, I mean, his girl, his girlfriend. Yeah, his girlfriend, I, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I think that had he, they should have been, in my opinion, unless I missed something, I was taking notes, so like I, maybe my head was down and they showed something on the TV that I missed. But unless he, like, they showed him looking through the house trying to find her any sign of her, and he goes outside and he notices the shed and then were to walk up to it. But the way he went, like, he's suddenly there, he's looking through the window like he's, like, assuming something's going you know what i mean like it felt a little I, weird like we're missing yeah, but something I think, uh, again i have to think back but i think to what nathan said i think he looked through the window of, of mid, from the cabin out and seeing him going through the, the shed i'm not sure because you could see the the sh- you you should be able to see the shed from the window yeah uh so maybe that i don't i, I don't know why i mean why not where else would you look for it? I mean, there's the I house, guess. and she's well, not yeah, there. but it's a huge look. The guy, the guy is a 
a forest ranger. Yeah. He's in charge of presumably a very large swath of yeah. this wilderness. She could be anywhere. And that brings me to my main point, which you got to agree with this. Why in the hell does he <laughs> bury them in his own shed? It's a nice shed. You got to, if you have a shed, you might as well take advantage of it. I mean, Fertilizer? You know, I, think, I think, yeah, I think it didn't say that, that the guy with the sling, what was that, uh, Titus yeah. Paul? I yes. think he said something about if the ground's not frozen, you need to bury the dead right away. Or yeah, yeah, that 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 was my biggest problem with this is that yeah. you bring the whole thing up where you know it's just like it's an urban legend in town where you have to bury if someone dies, you have to bury him. Yeah, within twenty four hours, or else he'll come back, assuming the ground is not frozen. But yeah. But he did bury these bodies immediately, and they still came yeah, back. And they so. still came back exactly. Yeah, I, like, was, well, yeah, I was. I couldn't really. Get so, my, uh, so yeah, that whole legend didn't really have to be in this. Well, and and point and actually to that point, what would have been, in my opinion, make more sense would be he gets the car started, he puts their bodies in the trunk, thinking he can get, and then it dies again, and he can't move it. So then maybe mm -hmm. he just drag, maybe then he drags their bodies back and just leaves them in the shed, trying to figure out what he's going to do, like showing him going back and forth, pacing in his house, trying to figure out the TV comes on, shows something happening, he freaks out, breaks out the TV. All of that stuff could have still happened very much the same way, but then they aren't buried, which would then reinforce what you're saying, that urban legend from the beginning, which is, probably should have buried them because that would have kept yeah. them from yeah i don't know i mean they did talk about it and uh, because uh, the guy uh, titus paul the guy with the sling yes uh, he had someone else that was supposed to he was supposed to bury someone else and uh he, they talked about this so maybe there was more to the legend than that or the i don't know the the rumor or yeah whatever i'm not sure cause, but uh yeah it seems it seemed weird yeah so, so and, maybe they had to be buried at a specific place or and then i don't i well john I john mcleam played titus paul the guy with the sling you keep mentioning and yeah. my favorite thing was because the whole bearing him in the right place peter is when with the proper main accent he said sometimes dead is better okay. so that was really my favorite part <laughs> in the entire episode <laughs> Joel being weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Which, which, then you put dot, dot, dot. No big surprise. Um, all right. So, per usual. I will say what I loved. Again, I already made the creep show illusion, which actually this came out 10 years before creep show. So, I, I although I'm assuming the so, was something to tide you over based on a specific King story, or was that original? I don't think show? so. That's original. Okay. Um, and so, I, I love that segment and i love that the aspect is and i will say this when they come out the out of the shed for like imagine being this like you're seven years old and you had snuck out and watched this and all you caught was like that last five minutes of this episode because up to that point i liked a lot of aspects of it but nothing much really happens but that last few minutes when they come out of the shed the way they do and there's just that long shot of yeah. them and you can only kind of make out parts of them in the shadows that's mm -hmm. nightmare. That was a nightmare fuel. Yeah, like, see when they <laughs> when they get into the house and he crawls under the table and the, and shadows, the shadows, yeah, the pitchfork yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and the scythe. Yeah, yeah. they picked yeah. they, they pick very good weapons. To yes, it. totally they good idea. Yeah, it was great. I love that. Now I will say the other thing I didn't get, and let's say did they establish he ran out of bullets because homeboy's rifle is sitting up against the door. He's freaking out. Why would you grab the rifle? Yeah, and another thing, if, if we're talking about that, it, it, it was right there with the door where he put a chair yes. haphazardly and a lamp and a, a, like, well, what are you doing? It, they're going to go. Yeah, into the that place that. Yeah, it's yeah. The placement of certain objects are weird. Yes. Um, like he's got he's got, he's got this big shed that he could put things in, but he he has the axe leaning up against the refrigerator in the yeah. kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this is where he keeps it. Do apparently, it's, it's almost it's, like, it's almost like that's a plot contrivance, and they needed him to break apart the TV. I didn't want to take mm -hmm. the time for him to run all the way to the shed. Uh, <laughs> but, maybe but, maybe he planned to hack them up and throw the the body parts of the wolves later. Maybe that's why it was in the. I don't. Know. But it, but if it had been established better, but I but yeah. am I right? Like he, the rifle is literally sitting by the front door. Yeah, exactly. Why wouldn't you at least grab matter. it? Like I figured yeah. he would have grabbed it, and then when they come to the door, he takes a couple shots, quick, and quick. and like he's shooting at the shadows, and nothing's happening, and they're still he, coming at him. He is very exhausted. He's been digging graves all day. That takes a lot of work. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my final point was, I love the shadows, as we said, um, but in the end, he still yes, he got his comeuppance. Yes. But won't everybody think he's just a victim? That all three of them were murdered by somebody that's roaming the countryside, Probably. and. <laughs> 
<laughs> Probably. And, and I mean, we going. never get that. We know what happened. And but I think it's just going to be. Yeah. It, Everybody's going to think you were just they were all three the real world. Yeah. Probably they think someone came and yeah. Yeah. And we don't know where Stella and the boyfriend are. Like, at the end, aren't they all three buried? Because they're still great. I think I thought I thought we only saw him, his hand. From, yeah, I saw uh, that out of, out of the grave. And, well, and I did, and, and and none of the, but none of the ground, like the ground next to him, had been at least disturbed. I would assume they're still out there, which would have been cooler probably, in my opinion. Yeah, but if you probably. go back and look at it, I could be wrong, Nathan. But I think they show three mounds. His is the only one you see the hand with the hat on top of it. Mm-hmm. But all three okay. mounds are there as if they've been undisturbed. I, I would have been. Well. I was too distracted by his beautiful hat, I guess. <laughs> that was amazing. It was it was really a great hat. But I will say that had that been like what you just like what you said, I think if it had been like the mound or the hat and then like the the two graves next to him were disturbed and thus they're out there somewhere, that's so much creepier. I think that's how it should have ended. That's just my two cents, but so what are, what are your final thoughts, Nathan, about this episode? Uh, does I it want- make you want to watch more Circle of Fear? I want to thank you for okay. uh, introducing the show to me. I liked this a great deal. Okay. I, I had I had a really good time with this. Uh, I was never bored. I you know I think Jason Robards has such a strong presence throughout this, and it was just fascinating to watch him. I, I like you. I love something to tide you over. I think it's my favorite creep show. Maybe my favorite, my favorite anthology segment ever of all mm, anthologies. Cool. Uh, and I thought Stella Stevens made the most of her short screen time. Uh, I think mm-hmm. some of the best moments of this is, are when. She's speaking to him through the TV. Like, yeah. She's like, oh, yeah. What are you gonna What are you gonna do now? Kind of taunting him. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I, thought, I, yeah. <laughs> I found her. I thought I found her character very compelling. Uh, like uh, like P, uh, Joel. Uh, like uh, Peter said, the the atmosphere is off the charts in this with this mm-hmm. with, with the soundtrack. Um, I love the the moments where he's like flip. He's uh, flipping through the channels and everyone sh- every channel shows wolves trying to claw underneath the shed to reach mm-hmm. Joanna's corpse. Yeah. Um, certain moments like Jason Robards uh, talking to the guy in the sling. He's like, what are you looking at me like that for? And I was like, I didn't realize I was looking at you in any special way. It's like some of the dialogue. Was <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and he's a, uh, Oh yeah. And we should also mention that Jason Robards character is a very functional alcoholic in this. He's, yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and reading the descriptions of the other episodes make me very interested to see more of the show. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, I thought this was excellent. Okay. And, actually, and yeah. I- most of them are actually up on YouTube. Oh. But I found I think the show is out on on DVD too. Oh, is I was gonna actually ask you yeah, that, Peter, because I, so. I, hmm. I think I might try to buy this on physical yeah, media because I too. checked other than YouTube, I couldn't find it anywhere. I saw that it was released on DVD, but only in Australia. I don't know. Oh, if okay. Well, I could I could be wrong, but that's that's what Wikipedia said at least. Well, well, well. For those of us that have a region-free uh, DVD Blu-ray player, you know what I'm saying. Any, so, yeah, should be any problem. Yeah, indeed. So uh, very cool. All right. Well, uh, Nathan, then thank you, sir, for joining us for this bonus episode. Did you this like a, this? Did you like it, Joel? Oh, uh, actually, no, Peter. I just realized I never I never asked you if you liked it. <laughs> I was going to say I, something. Yeah, I, I never got because you you've been you have some problems <laughs> no, with, but then you. Still I like actually, it? I here's the thing. Yes. I actually okay, did. Good. I did like it quite a bit. I know it probably sounded like I was naysaying it because there were wow. just those little things. I'm like, I feel like with this, the slightest script tweaks that it could have been almost not perfect, but it could have been just like on another level. And mm-hmm. I, I will say I the only think- thing I didn't like mainly because I just feel like it adds nothing. And I can see why they got rid of it is the opening and ending segment with the host. Yeah. Because I also, I think with, with shows like this, I mean, you, you kind of, they're they're truncated cut down so mm-hmm. stuff doesn't always make sense but it's still uh like with this one like uh nathan said super atmospheric and yeah. uh, with everything and again jason robards who is like always a joy to watch yeah so uh, yeah i i really really like this and it piqued my interest so i'm gonna go uh, seek out the dvd yeah anywhere. indeed and uh yeah, one of the actors is named Jack Kelly, and Jack Kelly is the name of one of my favorite side characters in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Well, there you go. Very good. Very good. All right. Well, uh, so I, like I said, liked it. Peter liked it. Nathan liked it. So if you're interested, go on YouTube or find the DVD if you're so inclined. Proving mm-hmm. for the millionth time, Peter, why physical media must never die. Uh, exactly. Because, because uh, we cannot you know, trust our corporate masters to not dispose of things we care about um but all of that being said nathan thank you so much for being here it's always a pleasure sir uh of course you will be joining us for another 
Spooky Flicks Fest episode, a a sort of, I guess, a regularly scheduled <laughs> episode, mm-hmm. uh, as well as this bonus. So uh, I appreciate you uh, tolerating us for for more than just one this year. So <laughs> so thank you for doing that. Thank you so much, Joel. Thank you, Peter. Really and don't it. don't forget uh, to uh, check out Horror yes. Galore. Yes. Yes, yes. yes, which I don't. I have like sitting on a shelf, like right there in the video store. It's in the video store. Just so you know, so I'm representing it. In Shame the store. on me. I haven't gotten it yet, but it is on my Christmas list. Thank for for uh, for myself. There's yes. a Christmas. There's a Christmas chapter in it, so it'll be appropriate. There you go. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I I love the titles so much. I just love, I love the chapter titles. Like they were cracking me up. That was my favorite part of it. Yeah, yeah, they're great. Uh, so yes, um, and the next time we meet in person, I will have to uh, have you do a, a an description in that one. So prepare yourself because I know uh, I I, I um, showed it to Tyson Pumpkin Cinema. I, I saw that. I, yeah, I, I was showing him, and, and he goes, "My God, we, we, he wrote you the most like like lengthy." I was like, "Yes, because Nathan's a good guy. You ask him to sign something, he is going to sign that hey, son of a bitch." He will write you yeah. a new book. Yeah, it's like and I got then, another. Yeah, got a little sign. <laughs> and then you show the clip. He's the best and the worst. <laughs> 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 yeah, so uh, definitely check all his stuff out. Where can they find? Mainly, I mean, is a is there a place you'd rather them go than the uh, the the giant behemoth book seller that we all know and Amazon. love hate? <laughs> no, that <laughs> that's, works. That's fine. That's the best. All right, Amazon. All right, so obviously it's available on Amazon. I didn't know if like you'd rather them buy them directly, you know, through you or the publisher or something like that. So, nah, all right, cool. Care. <laughs> all right yeah, yeah, yeah whatever as long as you read the book as long as you buy the book and read it yeah there it's you great go. you should absolutely if you're a movie lover especially horror obviously you absolutely should have both pumpkin cinema and horror galore by nathan toll thank you so much thank you for listening get all the spookiness you can handle this october by subscribing to mom and pop video shop on youtube you can also find Retro Movie Geek on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you dig up your podcasts. The spooktastic music you heard at the beginning and end of this episode was provided courtesy of Ed and Gavin and their band, Midnight Syndicate. We want to thank them for the use of music from their albums, Gates of Delirium, and The Thirteenth Hour. Want to sink your ghostly claws into this and all Midnight Syndicate's beautifully macabre music? Then go to MidnightSyndicate.com. And remember, spooky is a spooky dot.